section one of a plain english handbook how to create clear sec disclosure documents this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by marianne spiegel a plain english handbook how to create clear sec disclosure documents by the office of investor education and assistance u s securities and exchange commission acknowledgments by nancy m smith director office of investor education and assistance this handbook reflects the work ideas and generosity of many individuals and organizations at the sec and in the private sector at the fec staff in the divisions of corporation finance and investment management the office of public affairs and general counsel and the chairman's office provided insightful comments in particular commissioner isaac c hunt jr nick balamachi barry barbash greg corso brian lane diane sanger jennifer scardino michael shine heidi stam and tony vertuno offered invaluable advice and guidance corporate officials and lawyers enthusiastically helped us to breathe life into our plain english initiatives and this handbook the society of corporate secretaries the american bar association and the bond market association invited us to conduct workshops where we tested much of the information in the handbook kathleen gibson peggy foran susan wolf bruce bennett jim mckenzie jeff clowder fred green mark howard pierre de Saint-Fal, richard m phillips and alan j davis contributed mightily to our efforts special thanks to warren buffett for his support and preface to ken morris of lightbulb press and to the talented staff at siegel and gale i am especially grateful to the staff of my office for giving me the time and support i needed to work on the handbook three people poured their hearts and minds into this handbook from the start ann wallace from the division of corporate finance carolyn miller formerly of siegel and gale and now with the sec and william lutz author and professor of english at rutgers university all of the credit and none of the blame goes to them and finally many thanks to chairman arthur levitt who made it all possible by putting plain english at the top of his agenda so that investors might better understand their investments preface by warren e buffett this handbook and chairman levitt's whole drive to encourage plain english in disclosure documents are good news to me for more than forty years i have studied the documents that public companies file too often i have been unable to decipher just what is being said or worse yet had to conclude that nothing was being said if corporate lawyers and their clients follow the advice in this handbook my life is going to become much easier there are several possible explanations as to why i and others sometimes stumble over an accounting note or indenture description maybe we simply don't have the technical knowledge to grasp what the writer wishes to convey or perhaps the writer doesn't understand what he or she is talking about in some cases moreover i suspect that a less than scrupulous issuer doesn't want us to understand a subject it feels legally obligated to touch upon perhaps the most common problem however is that a well-intentioned and informed writer simply fails to get the message across to an intelligent interested reader in that case stilted jargon and complex constructions are usually the villains this handbook tells you how to free yourself from those impediments to effective communication write as this handbook instructs you and you will be amazed at how much smarter your readers will think you have become one unoriginal but useful tip write with a specific person in mind when writing berkshire hathaway's annual report i pretend that i'm talking to my sisters i have no trouble picturing them though highly intelligent they are not experts in accounting or finance they will understand plain english but jargon may puzzle them my goal is simply to give them the information i would wish them to supply me if our positions were reversed to succeed i don't need to be shakespeare i must though have a sincere desire to inform no siblings to write to borrow mine just begin with dear doris and bertie introduction by arthur levitt chairman u s securities and exchange commission investors 
need to read and understand disclosure documents to benefit fully from the protections offered by our federal securities laws because many investors are neither lawyers accountants nor investment bankers we need to start writing disclosure documents in a language investors can understand plain english the shift to plain english requires a new style of thinking and writing whether you work at a company a law firm or the u s securities and exchange commission we must question whether the documents we are used to writing highlight the important information investors need to make informed decisions the legalese and jargon of the past must give way to everyday words that communicate complex information clearly the good news is that more and more companies and lawyers are using plain english and filing documents with the sec that others can study use and improve upon with the sec's plain english rules in place every prospectus will have its cover page summary and risk factors in plain english the benefits of plain english abound investors will be more likely to understand what they are buying and to make informed judgments about whether they should hold or sell their investments brokers and investment advisers can make better recommendations to their clients if they can read and understand these documents quickly and easily companies that communicate successfully with their investors form stronger relationships with them these companies save the costs of explaining legalese and dealing with confused and sometimes angry investors lawyers reviewing plain english documents catch and correct mistakes more easily many companies have switched to plain english because it's a good business decision they see the value of communicating with their investors rather than sending them impenetrable documents and as we depend more and more on the internet and electronic delivery of documents plain english versions will be easier to read electronically than legalese the sec's staff has created this handbook to help speed and smooth the transition to plain english it includes proven tips from those in the private sector who have already created plain english disclosure documents this handbook reflects their substantial contributions and those of highly regarded experts in the field who were our consultants on this project dr william lutz at rutgers university and the firm of siegel and gale in new york city but i hasten to add that the sec has not cornered the market on plain english advice our rules and communications need as strong a dose of plain english as any disclosure document this handbook gives you some ideas on what has worked for others but use whatever works for you no matter what route you take to plain english we want you to produce documents that fulfill the promise of our securities laws i urge you in long and short documents in prospectuses and shareholder reports to speak to investors in words they can understand tell them plainly what they need to know to make intelligent investment decisions end of section one section two of a plain english handbook how to create clear sec disclosure documents by the office of investor education and assistance u s securities and exchange commission this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by marianne chapter one what is a plain english document we'll start by dispelling a common misconception about plain english writing it does not mean deleting complex information to make the document easier to understand for investors to make informed decisions disclosure documents must impart complex information using plain english assures the orderly and clear presentation of complex information so that investors have the best possible chance of understanding it plain english means analyzing and deciding what information investors need to make informed decisions before words sentences or paragraphs are considered a plain english document uses words economically and at a level the audience can understand its sentence structure is tight its tone is welcoming and direct its design is visually appealing a plain english document is easy to read and looks like it's meant to be read this handbook's purpose this handbook gives you practical tips on how to create plain english documents all of these were born of experience they come from experts and those who have already written or rewritten their documents in plain english as with all the advice in this handbook feel free to tailor these tips to your schedule your document and your budget not all of the tips will apply to everyone or to every document pick and choose the ones that make sense for you 
some of our tips cover very basic mechanical issues like how to photocopy your working draft we've included them because they were learned the hard way and have saved people time money and aggravation you'll see them listed in chapter eight titled time-saving tips this handbook is by no means the last word on plain english we expect to change it and add more tips as we learn more about writing securities documents in plain english so please keep notes on your experiences and copies of your original and rewritten language we want to hear from you and include your tips and rewrites in the next edition finally we encourage you to give this handbook out freely it is not copyrighted so you can photocopy it without fear of penalty chapter two getting started assemble the team or move ahead on your own as with a lot of things in life it's the preparation that often determines the success or failure of an effort to write documents in plain english many of you routinely select a team to think and talk about how to write a document from scratch or rewrite an existing document or you may do it on your own in that case rest assured that one person can do it alone the list below describes the types of people who have participated in successful plain english teams we're not suggesting that you need to select everyone listed some will not apply to your company or your situation the people you select and the point at which you involve them in your plain english project will depend on your document your schedule and your budget a team leader who has the authority to make decisions that keep the project moving forward and bring it to a successful conclusion more than one plain english project has faltered because the team leader has not had this level of authority the team leader may be a company's or an underwriter's lawyer a lead writer who ensures the document uses a logical structure and simple clear language if more than one person is drafting sections of the document the lead writer makes sure the final draft has a consistent tone and the individual parts form a coherent whole lawyers for the company or the underwriter who know what information must be included and why an investor relations expert who knows firsthand the financial sophistication of your investors investor relations people know which questions investors typically ask and where past disclosure documents have failed to make information clear a compliance officer who can lend guidance to the writer and who knows along with your lawyers what information must be included a production and operations person who understands the mechanics and costs of printing and mailing your document so that your improved document doesn't get ahead of your in-house capabilities or budget a marketing person who may have market survey research or polls on your investors also the marketing department is usually attuned to the terminology that your investors can readily understand an information designer who is a graphic designer trained to work closely with the writers and to think about how to present complex information visually select documents you may want to consider these issues as you start writing in plain english how long is the document will you write all of it or only sections of it in plain english how much time do you have before you need to file your document you will also want to gather and distribute other documents that your company has written for investors it's likely that your company has already used plain english in its glossy annual reports and other communications prepared especially for investors these documents may save you time by showing you the type of language your company is already comfortable using chapter three knowing your audience knowing your audience is the most important step in assuring that your document is understandable to your current or prospective investors to write understandable documents you need to gauge the financial sophistication of your investors through polls and other market survey research tools some companies know the demographics of their investors well other companies rely on their investor relations staff or their underwriters to describe who has bought or is likely to buy their securities using whatever information is available you can create a profile of your investors or prospective investors based on the following questions what are their demographics age income level of education and job experience how familiar are they with investments and financial terminology what investment concepts can you safely assume they understand 
how will they read the document for the first time will they read it straight through or skip around to the sections that interest them will they read your document and your competitors side by side how will they use the document while they own the security what information will they be looking for later and is it easy to find your investors or prospective investors may include individuals and institutions with varying degrees of financial sophistication while your audience will include analysts and other industry experts you may want to keep in mind that your least sophisticated investors have the greatest need for a disclosure document they can understand some companies have faced the differing needs of their investors and other audiences by making basic educational information visually distinctive from the rest of the text so that sophisticated investors can easily recognize and scan it once you've drawn a profile of your investors keep it constantly in mind some writers keep a photo of a typical investor to make sure they don't lose sight of their readers after analyzing who your investors are you can turn to the document you want to write or rewrite one must consider also the audience the reader is the judge aristotle rhetoric chapter four knowing the information you need to disclose the steps outlined in this section have been used successfully by others who have written disclosure documents in plain english as we said earlier feel free to tailor these steps to your own schedule and team this is one approach if you are rewriting an existing document but others may work equally well read and outline the current document read the entire document once without making any notes or comments on the text this should give you a general understanding of the information covered in the document and make your next read more productive when you read it the second time make notes on what information is covered and any questions you have your notes will also help you assess if information flows through your document in logical order as you read consider the following will the investors understand the language does the document highlight information that is important to investors is any important information missing does the document include information that is not legally required and will not help investors make informed decisions meet to resolve questions meet with the authors of the original document or others who understand it and any members of the team who can help to answer the questions you wrote in the margins besides the obvious reason for the meeting another more important goal is to question the need for everything that appears in the document because it's always been there is not reason enough to keep it in your draft since much of the language in these documents is recycled from older or another company's documents often no one knows who initially wrote it or why it is needed now if you've done your legal research and no one knows why the information is important or required consider taking it out eliminate redundant information question the need for repeating any information reading the same material two or three times can bore and even trouble readers most readers skip over paragraphs if they think they've read them before if you cut down on repetitious paragraphs or sentences you'll not only earn the gratitude of your reader you'll reduce printing and mailing costs discuss the cover page and the summary a cover page should be an introduction an inviting entryway into your document giving investors some key facts about your offering but not telling everything all at once if it looks dense and overgrown with thorny details no one will want to pick it up and start reading if it looks like a legal document written by lawyers and for lawyers many investors will not even attempt to read it to create an inviting cover page you'll need to strip away much of what is conventionally placed there but which is not required as you review your cover page question why each item of information is there it may be important but does it have to be on the cover page you usually have a substantial document following the cover page let some of those other pages carry the information load in logical order what would be helpful for investors to see on this page look through your investors eyes and you'll make better decisions about where to place information the same goes for the summary a summary should orient the reader 
highlighting the most important points that are presented in greater detail in the prospectus many summaries now seem as long as the document itself and consist merely of paragraphs copied straight from the body of the document use defined terms sparingly although customary introducing defined terms on the cover page and in the summary discourages many readers from getting beyond the first pages overwhelmed with memorizing a new and unnatural vocabulary and bothered by constantly having to flip back and hunt for the first time a defined term's definition appears, many an investor will not stick with the document. One plain English expert has advised, don't let a shortcut for the writer become a roadblock for the reader. Chapter 5. Reorganizing the Document A few principles of good organization apply universally. First, Present the big picture before the details. Prospectuses routinely start with a detailed description of the securities. You may read pages before you find out what the company produces or why it is merging or spinning off a subsidiary. It's hard to absorb the details if you don't know why they are being given to you. Imagine trying to put together a complicated jigsaw puzzle without first seeing the picture of the completed puzzle. An individual piece of information means more to your readers if they know how it fits into the big picture. Second, use descriptive headers and subheaders to break your document up into manageable sections. Prospectuses impart a lot of information. If you present the information in bite-sized pieces, it's easier to digest. Make sure your headings tell the reader what the upcoming sections will cover. Headings like general or background aren't especially helpful. Third, always group related information together. This helps you identify and eliminate repetitious information. Fourth, your audience's degree of investment expertise will affect how you organize the document. If you are writing for financially unsophisticated investors, your document's overall organization may take an educational approach. You may need to explain industry terms or concepts when they first appear. Fifth, review your document by taking a good look at the flow of information from beginning to end. Start making decisions on how the content should be moved around into a new and logical order based on the audience profile, the notes you made in the margins, the decisions you've made on your cover page and summary, the information you've learned in answering your questions. Once you have finished physically reorganizing the document, you may want to write an outline of your new organization. Your outline can later become your table of contents. You're now ready to start rewriting your document in plain English. And, speaking of writing. End of section two. Section three of A Plain English Handbook. How to Create Clear SEC Disclosure Documents by the Office of Investor Education and Assistance, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Marianne. Chapter 6. Writing in Plain English. We thought it would be helpful to list the most common problems we've encountered with disclosure documents. Common problems. Long sentences. Passive voice weak verbs, superfluous words, legal and financial jargon, numerous defined terms, abstract words, unnecessary details, unreadable design and layout. In the following pages, we offer some ways to fix these problems. For example, here's a common sentence found in prospectuses. No person has been authorized to give any information or make any representation other than those contained or incorporated by reference in this joint proxy statement slash prospectus, and, if given or made, such information or representation must not be relied upon as having been authorized. Here's one possible plain English rewrite. You should rely only on the information contained in this document or that we have referred you to, we have not authorized anyone to provide you with information that is different. The plain English rewrite uses everyday words, short sentences, active voice, regular print, and personal pronouns that speak directly to the reader. 
do you think the rewrite captures the meaning of the original would you write it differently throughout this chapter you'll find before examples from disclosure documents with plain english after examples to illustrate specific principles of plain english since some of the before examples contain ambiguities that can be successfully resolved only by studying their context in a particular document we did not attempt to provide rewrites to cover every interpretation we encourage you to write your own plain english versions to fit your views and your needs we don't want to create a new generation of plain english boilerplate although the principles that follow may sound deceptively simple if you use them your writing will improve dramatically use the active voice with strong verbs the plodding verbosity of most disclosure documents makes readers yearn for clear words and short sentences the quickest fix lies in using the active voice with strong verbs strong verbs are guaranteed to liven up and tighten any sentence virtually causing information to spring from the page when you start to rewrite or edit your work highlighting all the verbs can help you may be surprised by the number of weak verbs especially forms of to be or to have that you'll find the time you spend searching for a precise and strong verb is time well spent when a verb carries more meaning you can dispense with many of the words used to bolster weak verbs weak verbs keep frequent company with two more grammatical undesirables passive voice and hidden verbs in tandem they add unnecessary length and confusion to a sentence the active and passive voices if you need it here's a quick refresher on the active and passive voice active the investor buys the stock in the active voice the subject of the sentence the investor performs the action buying the stock passive the stock is bought by the investor in the passive voice the subject the stock is acted upon the person or the thing doing the action is introduced with by but sometimes the person or thing doing the action is deleted leading to passive with agent deleted the stock is bought you don't know who bought the stock you'll find many examples of the passive with agent deleted in disclosure documents readers understand sentences in the active voice more quickly and easily because it follows how we think and process information many times the passive voice forces readers to take extra mental steps as they convert the passive into the active to recognize the passive voice ask yourself does the sentence use a form of the verb to be with another verb in the past tense and a prepositional phrase beginning with by remember that it's harder to recognize the passive voice when the object the phrase introduced with by is left out when you rewrite the sentence in the active voice use a strong verb these examples show how strong verbs and the active voice transform sentences making them shorter and easier to understand before the foregoing fee table is intended to assist investors in understanding the costs and expenses that a shareholder in the fund will bear directly or indirectly the before example uses the passive with agent deleted we don't know who intended to assist investors note how long it took to get to the meat of the sentence the costs and expenses dispensing with the filler words to assist investors in understanding moves the reader more quickly to the important points after this table describes the fees and expenses that you may pay if you buy and hold shares of the fund here's another example before the proxy solicited hereby for the heartland meeting may be revoked subject to the procedures described herein at any time up to and including the date of the heartland meeting after you may revoke your proxy and reclaim your right to vote up to and including the day of the meeting by following the directions on page ten the plain english version tells you who may revoke a proxy and where to find the information on how to do it it replaces the abstract subject to the procedures described herein with concrete everyday words by following the directions on page ten it's not enough merely to translate existing texts 
the key is to add useful information don't ban the passive voice use it sparingly as with all advice in this handbook we are presenting guidelines not hard and fast rules you must always follow the passive voice may make sense when the person or thing performing the action is of secondary importance to another subject that should play the starring role in the sentence use the passive voice only when you have a good reason for doing so when in doubt choose the active voice find hidden verbs does the sentence use any form of the verbs to be to have or another weak verb with a noun that could be turned into a strong verb in these sentences the strong verb lies hidden in a nominalization a noun derived from a verb that usually ends in t-i-o-n find the noun and try to make it the main verb of the sentence as you change nouns to verbs your writing becomes more vigorous and less abstract before we made an application after we applied before we made a determination after we determined before we will make a distribution after we will distribute before we will provide appropriate information to shareholders concerning after we will inform shareholders about before we will have no stock ownership of the company after we will not own the company's stock before there is the possibility of prior board approval of these investments after the board might approve these investments in advance try personal pronouns no matter how sophisticated your audience is if you use personal pronouns the clarity of your writing will dramatically improve here's why first personal pronouns aid your readers comprehension because they clarify what applies to your reader and what applies to you second they allow you to speak directly to your reader creating an appealing tone that will keep your reader reading third they help you to avoid abstractions and to use more concrete and everyday language fourth they keep your sentences short fifth first and second person pronouns aren't gender specific allowing you to avoid the he or she dilemma the pronouns to use are first person plural we us our ours and second person singular you your yours observe the difference between these two examples before this summary does not purport to be complete and is qualified in its entirety by the more detailed information contained in the proxy statement and the appendices hereto all of which should be carefully reviewed after because this is a summary it does not contain all the information that may be important to you you should read the entire proxy statement and its appendices carefully before you decide how to vote bring abstractions down to earth abstractions abound in the financial industry what pictures form in your mind when you read these phrases mutual fund the dow jones industrial average zero coupon bond call option or foreign currency trading most people don't have an image in their minds when they hear abstract words like these and yet it's far easier to comprehend a concept or a situation when your mind can form images in a study conducted at carnegie mellon university a cognitive psychologist and an english professor discovered that readers faced with complex written information frequently resorted to creating scenarios in an effort to understand the text that is they often made an abstract concept understandable by using it in a hypothetical situation in which people performed actions you can make complex information more understandable by giving your readers an example using one investor this technique explains why question and answer formats often succeed when a narrative abstract discussion fails here is an example of how this principle can be used to explain an abstract concept call options for example you can buy an option from mr smith that gives you the right to buy one hundred shares of stock x from him at twenty five dollars per share any time between now and six weeks from now you believe x's purchase price will go up between now and then 
he believes it will stay the same or go down if you exercise this option before it expires mr smith must sell you one hundred shares of stock x at twenty five dollars per share even if the purchase price has gone up either way whether you exercise your option or not he keeps the money you paid him for the option although it is impossible to eliminate all abstractions from writing always use a more concrete term when you can read this list of progressively less abstract terms and consider how you might make abstract concepts you write about more concrete asset investment security equity stock common stock one share of ibm common stock the following examples show how you can replace abstract terms with more concrete ones and increase your reader's comprehension before sandy hill basic value fund inc the fund seeks capital appreciation and secondarily income by investing in securities primarily equities that management of the fund believes are undervalued and therefore represent basic investment value after at the sandy hill basic value fund we will strive to increase the value of your shares capital appreciation and to a lesser extent to provide income dividends we will invest primarily in undervalued stocks meaning those selling for low prices given the financial strength of the companies before no consideration or surrender of baco stock will be required of shareholders of baco in return for the shares of eunice common stock issued pursuant to the distribution after you will not have to turn in your shares of baco stock or pay any money to receive your shares of eunice common stock from the spin-off omit superfluous words words are superfluous when they can be replaced with fewer words that mean the same thing sometimes you can use a simpler word for these phrases the superfluous followed by the simpler in order to to in the event that if subsequent to after prior to before despite the fact that although because of the fact that because since in light of because since owing to the fact that because since another source of superfluous words is shotgunning letting loose a blast of words hoping at least one conveys your intended meaning the simplest solution here is to replace your laundry list of adjectives with a single word or phrase that adequately expresses your intended meaning omitting superfluous words is one of the easiest ways to improve your disclosure document because it doesn't require you to revise sentence structure before the following summary is intended only to highlight certain information contained elsewhere in the prospectus after this summary highlights some information from this prospectus before machine industries and great tools inc are each subject to the information requirements of the securities exchange act of 1934 as amended the exchange act and in accordance therewith file reports proxy statements and other information with the securities and exchange commission the commission after we file annual quarterly and special reports proxy statements and other information with the securities and exchange commission sec before drake core has filed with the internal revenue service a tax ruling request concerning among other things the tax consequences of the distribution to the united states holders of drake corp stock it is expected that the distribution of beco common stock to the shareholders of drake corp will be tax free to such shareholders for federal income tax purposes except to the extent that cash is received for fractional share interests after while we expect that this transaction will be tax-free for u s shareholders at the federal level except for any cash paid for fractional shares we have asked the internal revenue service to rule that it is write in the positive positive sentences are shorter and easier to understand than their negative counterparts 
for example before persons other than the primary beneficiary may not receive these dividends after only the primary beneficiary may receive these dividends also your sentences will be shorter and easier to understand if you replace a negative phrase with a single word that means the same thing for example first listing the negative compound then the single word not able unable not accept reject not certain uncertain not unlike similar alike does not have lacks does not include excludes omits not many few not often rarely not the same different not unless only if not except only if not until only when use short sentences no one likes to read a sentence that's two pages long and yet lengthy information-packed sentences choke many prospectuses today to complicate matters further these sentences are filled with jargon and legalese the longer and more complex a sentence the harder it is for readers to understand any single portion of it before the following description encompasses all the material terms and provisions of the notes offered hereby and supplements and to the extent inconsistent therewith replaces the description of the general terms and provisions of the debt securities as defined in the accompanying prospectus set forth under the heading description of debt securities in the prospectus to which description reference is hereby made the following description will apply to each note unless otherwise specified in the applicable pricing supplement if you really want to root out the problem with this paragraph you need to think of the deeper reasons why it doesn't work if you look beyond the language used you'll find that it presents complex information without first providing a context for the reader the rewrites that follow show two ways to provide the context with and without tabulation after we provide information to you about our notes in three separate documents that progressively provide more detail one the prospectus two the prospectus supplement and three the pricing supplement since the terms of specific notes may differ from the general information we have provided in all cases rely on information in the pricing supplement over different information in the prospectus and the prospectus supplement and rely on this prospectus supplement over different information in the prospectus or we provide information to you about our notes in three separate documents that progressively provide more detail one the prospectus general information that may or may not apply to each note two the prospectus supplement more specific than the prospectus and to the extent information differs from the prospectus rely on the different information in this document three the pricing supplement provides final details about a specific note including its price to the extent the information differs from the prospectus or the prospectus supplement rely on the different information in this document information-packed sentences leave most investors scratching their heads so many of these sentences have become boilerplate that writers cut and paste them into new documents without thinking about how they can be improved since these sentences can be a little intimidating we thought we'd tackle another one before the drake capital corporation the company may offer from time to time its global medium-term notes series a due from nine months to sixty years from date of issue which are issuable in one or more series the notes in the united states in an aggregate principal amount of up to u s six billion four hundred and twenty eight million five hundred and ninety eight thousand five hundred dollars or the equivalent thereof in other currencies including composite currencies such as the european currency unit the ecu provided that with respect to original issue discount notes as defined under description of notes original issue discount notes the initial offering price of such notes 
shall be used in calculating the aggregate principal amount of notes offered hereunder. After. The Drake Capital Corporation may offer at various times up to U.S. $6,428,598,500 worth of global medium-term notes. These notes will mature from nine months to 60 years after the date they are purchased. We will offer these notes in series, starting with Series A, and in U.S. foreign and composite currencies, like the European Currency Unit. If we offer original issue discount notes, we will use their initial offering prices to calculate when we reach $6,428,598,500. As you can see, one long sentence became four shorter sentences. The paragraph moves from the general to the specific, contains short, common words, and is written in the active voice. You only need to read the paragraph once to understand it. Replace jargon and legalese with short, common words. Ruthlessly eliminate jargon and legalese. Instead, use short, common words to get your points across. In those instances where there is no plain English alternative, explain what the term means when you first use it. If you have been in the financial or legal industry for a while, it may be hard to spot jargon and legalese in your writing. Consider asking someone outside the industry to check your work for incomprehensible words. Last, don't create a new jargon that's unique to your document in the form of acronyms or other words. It's asking too much of your readers to memorize a new vocabulary while they are trying to understand complicated concepts. This holds true for individual and institutional investors. Note the following, which is the first sentence on the cover page of an exchange offer. NRL Insured Mortgage Association, Inc., a Delaware corporation, NRL MAE, which is an actively managed, infinite life, New York Stock Exchange listed real estate investment trust, REIT, and PAL Liquidating REIT, Inc., a newly formed, finite life, self liquidating Delaware corporation, which intends to qualify as a REIT, PAL Liquidating REIT, hereby jointly offer, upon the terms and subject to the conditions set forth herein, and in the related letters of transmittal, collectively the offer, to exchange 1. Shares of NRL MAE's common stock, par value 1 cent per share, NRL MAE shares, or, at the option of the unit holders, shares of PAL liquidating REIT's common stock, par value 1 cent per share, PAL liquidating REIT shares, and 2. The right to receive cash payable 60 days after closing, on the first of any acquisitions, as defined below, but in no event later than 270 days, nine months, following consummation of the offer, the deferred cash payment, for all outstanding limited partnership interests and depository units of limited partnership interests, collectively units, in each of PAL Insured Mortgage Investors, a California limited partnership, PAL 84, PAL Insured Mortgage Investors Series 85, a California Limited Partnership, a California Limited Partnership, PAL 85, and PAL Insured Mortgage Investors LP Series 86, a Delaware Limited Partnership, PAL 86. See the offer. This sentence suffers from many shortcomings. It's long and laden with defined terms and other data that mask the fundamental information the two companies are offering to exchange their stock for the investor's limited partnership holdings. Some of the information, such as par value and places of incorporation, can be moved to another part of the document. Much of the language modifies the subjects and the objects. This language, too, can be moved to a separate sentence or another section of the prospectus. This example shows the hazards of creating unfamiliar acronyms. They provide false economies, especially when they are introduced on the cover page and in the first pages of the prospectus. They may save a few words, but they may also frustrate and force the reader to take more time and effort to understand the document. Where acronyms such as REIT are widely understood to the investing public, they can safely be used without creating confusion. Occasionally, it is necessary to assign a shorter word to a long proper noun and use this word throughout the rest of the document. 
in these rare instances try to choose a word that has an intuitive logical relationship to the one it's replacing this reduces the number of new words or phrases the reader needs to memorize to understand the document choose the simpler synonym surround complex ideas with short common words for example use end instead of terminate explain rather than elucidate and use instead of utilize when a shorter simpler synonym exists use it keep this subject verb and object close together short and simple sentences enhance the effectiveness of short common words we've covered a number of guidelines for writing shorter sentences but there are a few more you can use to streamline your writing further to be clear sentences must have a sound structure here are a few ways to ensure yours do the natural word order of english speakers is subject verb object your sentences will be clearer if you follow this order as closely as possible in disclosure documents this order is frequently interrupted by modifiers for example before holders of the class a and class b1 certificates will be entitled to receive on each payment date to the extent monies are available therefore but not more than the class a certificate balance or class b1 certificate balance than outstanding a distribution after class a and class b1 certificate holders will receive a distribution on each payment date if cash is available on those dates for their class before the following description of the particular terms of the notes offered hereby referred to in the accompanying prospectus as the debt securities supplements and to the extent inconsistent therewith replaces the description of the general terms and provisions of the debt securities set forth in the prospectus to which description reference is hereby made after this document describes the terms of these notes in greater detail than our prospectus and so may provide information that differs from our prospectus if the information does differ from our prospectus please rely on the information in this document write using if then conditionals conditional statements are very common in disclosure documents although they are rarely written that way when we rewrote the last example as a conditional we followed the natural english word order very closely that's why the sentence is easier to read here are four rules of thumb to help you write conditional statements effectively one if one then when there is only one if and one then starting with the if may spare some of your readers from having to read the rest of the sentence in these cases the if clause defines who or what the then clause applies to if you invested in class a shares then one if multiple thens where there is only one if and more than one then start with the ifs and tabulate the thens multiple ifs and one then when there is only one then and more than one if start with the then and tabulate the ifs multiple ifs and thens when there is more than one if and more than one then you'll probably need to break it down into more than one sentence taking care to specify which ifs apply to which thens if the information is still unclear consider presenting the information in a table keep your sentence structure parallel a long sentence often fails without a parallel structure parallelism simply means ensuring a list or series of items is presented using parallel parts of speech such as nouns or verbs note the quotation in the margin parallelism reinforces grammatically equal elements contributes to ease in reading and provides clarity and rhythm horner webb miller harbrace college handbook in this section we've shown each parallel structure we've used in bold here's an example from a mutual fund prospectus that lacks parallel structure before if you want to buy shares in fund x by mail fill out and sign the account application form making your check payable to the x fund and put your social security or taxpayer identification number on your check after 
if you want to buy shares in fund x by mail fill out and sign the account application form make your check payable to the x fund and put your social security or taxpayer identification number on your check here is a more subtle example from another mutual fund prospectus before we invest the fund's assets in short-term money market securities to provide you with liquidity protection of your investment and high current income the sentence is unparalleled because its series is made up of two nouns and an adjective before the third noun it's also awkward because the verb provide is too closely paired with the nominalization protection one logical revision to the original sentence is to change the noun series to a verb series after we invest in short-term money market securities to provide you with liquidity to protect your investment and to generate high current income all writers regardless of their degree of expertise occasionally write on parallel sentences the best way to rid your document of them is to read through it once solely to find these mistakes reading your document aloud can make unparalleled constructions easier to spot steer clear of respectively how easy is it to read the following sentence once and understand what it means before the senior notes and the guarantee the guarantee of the senior notes by island holdings will constitute unsecured senior obligations of the issuer and island holdings respectively after the senior notes are an unsecured senior obligation of the issuer while the guarantee of the senior notes is an unsecured senior obligation of island holdings whenever you use respectively you force your reader to go back and match up what belongs to what you may be saving words by using respectively but your reader has to use more time and read your words twice to understand what you've written end of section three Section 4 of A Plain English Handbook How to Write Clear SEC Disclosure Documents by the Office of Investor Education and Assistance, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Marianne. Chapter 7 Designing the Document A plain English document reflects thoughtful design choices. The right design choices make a document easier to read and its information easier to understand. The wrong design choices can make even a well-written document fail to communicate. Some documents suffer because no one knew how basic design decisions, like typeface selection, dramatically determine whether or not a document is easy to read. Other documents suffer because expensive design features give them artistic appeal, but at the cost of obscuring the text. In a plain English document, design serves the goal of communicating the information as clearly as possible beginning the design process check with your in-house printing or graphics department your company may have already dealt with design issues in other documents or may have skilled designers who can help you with your document if your company or underwriter has a style manual it typically will define a required look that specifies typefaces and layouts since some standards or guidelines in your style manual may have been adopted when plain english was not a concern Review them to ensure they contribute to good design and ease of reading. If you are using a designer, keep the following in mind. Good design requires clear communication between the writer and the designer. Keep the lines of communication open and flowing. Take time to explain the nuances of your document to your designer. Don't move into the design phase until your text is final. Once the document is put into page layout software, or once it is at the printer, Making text changes can be tedious and expensive. If you don't have a design professional, fear not. You can apply many of the simple concepts discussed in this chapter to produce a readable, visually appealing document. While the field of design extends broadly, this chapter covers five basic design elements and how they contribute to creating a plain English document. Hierarchy, or distinguishing levels of information. Topography. Layout graphics color hierarchy much like an outline a document's hierarchy shows how you've organized the information 
and helps the reader to understand the relationship between different levels of information. A typical hierarchy in the prospectus might include the document title, the section headings, first level, subsection headings, second level, paragraph headings, third level, general text, fourth level. Designers use different typefaces in the headings to distinguish these levels for the reader. As a rule of thumb, there should be no more than six levels in the document, excluding the document's title. You can signal a new level by varying the same typeface or by using a different typeface. Here's a demonstration of how we've used different typefaces to distinguish levels in this handbook. Section headings, subsection headings, general text, example headings. Topography. Although it may seem like a minor decision, your typeface selection will be one of the elements that most strongly defines the design and readability of your document. Kinds of typefaces. Typefaces come in two varieties, serif and sans serif. All serif typefaces have small lines at the beginning or ending strokes of each letter. Virtually all newspapers and many magazines use some form of serif type for their general text because serif fonts are easier to read than sans serif. This handbook uses a serif typeface called Scala for general text. Other popular serif typefaces are Caslon, Century Schoolbook, Garamond, and Times. Here are some examples. Serif. This is an example of Scala. This is an example of Caslon. This is an example of Century Schoolbook. This is an example of Garamond. This is an example of Times. Sans serif typefaces lack those small connective lines. The type used for most headings throughout this document is a sans serif typeface, Scala Sans. Franklin Gothic, Frutiger, Helvetica, and Univers are examples of sans serif typefaces. Sans serif. This is an example of Franklin Gothic. This is an example of Frutiger. This is an example of Helvetica. This is an example of universe. Generally, serif typefaces are easier to read in documents like this than sans serif because the small connective lines of serif help to lead your eye more quickly and smoothly over the text. It is best to use sans serif typefaces in small quantities for emphasis or headings, but not for general text. Both serifs and sans serifs work well for headings. Selecting the right typeface. When choosing a typeface, think carefully about where the typeface will appear in the document. For example, will it be general text, or will it apply to information that needs to be highlighted? Will it introduce a section? Some typefaces are harder to read than others and were never intended for text. Typefaces like Bodoni poster or other bold, italic, or condensed typefaces were designed for headlines or for large display text. These examples show how difficult it is to read text in these typefaces. Examples given of Bodoni Poster and Franklin Gothic Condensed. You can mix different typefaces, but do so with discretion. Not all typefaces work well together. Mixing a serif and sans serif, as we have done in this handbook, can look good and create a clear contrast between your levels. Mixing two serif or two sans serif typefaces can look like a mistake. As a general rule, do not use more than two typefaces in any document, not including the bold or italic versions of a typeface. Type measurement. All typefaces are measured in points, but don't assume that different typefaces in the same point size are of equal size. For example, here are four typefaces set in 11 point. This is an example in 11 point Franklin Gothic. This is an example in 11-point Century Schoolbook. This is an example in 11-point Garamond. This is an example in 11-point Helvetica. This is an example in 11-point Times. Choose a legible type size. A point size that is too small is difficult for everyone to read. A point size that is too large is also hard to read. Generally type in 10-point to 12-point is most common, but as you can see from the examples above, some typefaces in 11 point will strain some readers. If you have special concerns about legibility, especially for an elderly audience, you should consider using 12 point or larger. Emphasizing text. 
it is common in disclosure documents to see blocks of text in bold and upper case letters the capitalization and bold type attempt to catch the reader's attention unfortunately those capitals make the text difficult to read all uppercase sentences usually bring the reader to a standstill because the shapes of words disappear causing the reader to slow down and study each letter ironically readers tend to skip sentences written in all uppercase to highlight information and maintain readability use a different size or weight of your typeface try using extra white space bold type shading rules boxes or sidebars in the margins to make information stand out in this handbook we use dotted rules to highlight the examples whatever method you choose to highlight information use it consistently throughout your document so your readers can recognize how you flag important information in the before example the text is printed in all cap in two after examples the same text is printed one in italic one in bold layout designers think carefully about white space column width line spacing and paragraph length these design elements determine whether reading is easy or becomes too much of a physical or mental chore use white space effectively generous use of white space on the page enhances readability helps to emphasize important points and lightens the overall look of the document white space especially affects the reader of disclosure documents because these documents usually feature dense blocks of impenetrable text you should fight the impulse to fill up the entire page with text or graphics. A wide left or right margin can make the document easier to read. The use of white space between sections or subsections helps readers recognize which information is related. Use left justified, ragged right text. Research shows that the easiest text to read is left justified, ragged right text. That is, the text is aligned or flush on the left with a loose or ragged right edge. The text in this handbook is set left justified, ragged right. Fully justified text means both the right and left edges are flush or even. When you fully justify text, the spacing between words fluctuates from line to line, causing the eye to stop and constantly readjust to the variable spacing on each line. Currently, most disclosure documents are fully justified. This coupled with a severe shortage of white space makes these documents visually unappealing and difficult to read be especially wary of centering text or using text to form a shape or design uneven margins may make a visual impact but they make reading extremely difficult recommended left justified ragged right justified text was the style for many years we grew up on it but there has been a great deal of research on readability, how easy something is to read, and it shows that those disruptive, inconsistent gaps between the words inhibit the flow of reading. Besides, they look dumb. Keep your eyes open as you look at professionally printed work, and you'll find there's a strong trend now to align type on the left and leave the right ragged. This same example is also given in Not Recommended Fully Justified Text and Not Recommended Centered Text use line spacing to lighten the page line spacing or letting rhymes with sledding refers to the amount of space between lines of text letting controls the density and readability of the text just as type is measured in points so is letting a type description of 12 16 means that 12 point type has been set with four points of additional letting between the lines generous letting can give a long paragraph a lighter, airier feeling and make it easier to read. Avoid setting type without any additional letting, such as 10 slash 10 or 12 slash 12, sometimes referred to as being set solid. Typically, you should allow at least two points of letting between lines of type. You may want to add more letting depending on the airiness you would like the document to have. In this document, for ease of reading, the general text has been set at 11 16, and most examples have been set at 10 12. Review the following examples to see how letting affects readability. Examples given at 11 11, 11 13, 11 15. Keep lines a reasonable length. 
a comfortable line length for most readers is thirty two to sixty four characters any longer than that and your readers will lose their place when they read from line to line a safe rule to follow is the smaller the type size the shorter the line length this is why when you pick up any newspaper magazine or large book you'll rarely see any text that goes from one side of the page clear to the other as you do in disclosure documents columns also help your readers to move quickly and easily through large amounts of text an average column width can vary from twenty five to forty characters remember to use ample white space between columns too examples follow showing don't a long line length and do a short line length and columns keep paragraph length relatively short to reduce dense text keep paragraphs as short as possible even though paragraph length is determined by content here are some design tips that can help to lighten a long paragraph use bullets to list information wherever possible this makes information easier to absorb in one quick glance as the following illustrates before the funds invest mainly in the stocks of u.s and foreign companies that are showing improved earnings and that sell at low prices relative to their cash flow or growth rates the fund also invests in debt both investment grade and junk bonds and u.s treasury securities after we invest the funds assets in bullet stock of u.s and foreign companies that hyphen show improved earnings and hyphen sell at low prices relative to their cash flows or growth rates bullet debt both investment grade and junk bonds and bullet u s treasuries use tables to increase clarity use tables to increase clarity and cut down text tables often convey information more quickly and clearly than text the information in this table is more easily grasped in a table than in a narrative form before our investment advisory agreements cover the growth fund international fund muni fund bond fund and the money market fund the effective rate for agreements for the growth fund and the international fund is june first nineteen ninety three and for the muni fund bond fund and money market fund june first nineteen ninety four after our investment advisory agreement covers these funds investment advisory agreement effective date fund name June 1, 1993, Growth Fund, International Fund. June 1, 1994, Muni Fund, Bond Fund, Money Market Fund. Graphics. Graphics often illuminate information more clearly and quickly than text. This section introduces some basic guidelines about using graphics in your document. To learn more, books and articles cover the topic in rich and rewarding detail. The best known work, the visual display of quantitative information by edward r tuft provides practical advice on creating graphics in the introduction of his book he writes about the importance and value of graphics at their best graphics are instruments for reasoning about quantitative information often the most effective way to describe explore and summarize a set of numbers even a very large set is to look at pictures of those numbers furthermore of all methods of analyzing and communicating statistical information, well-designed data graphics are usually the simplest and at the same time the most powerful. On page 51 of his book, Tuft formulates a number of basic principles to follow in creating excellent graphics. Among them are these. Graphic excellence is that which gives the viewer the greatest number of ideas in the shortest time with the least ink in the smallest space and graphical excellence requires telling the truth about data. A few experts have studied the use of graphics in securities documents, isolating the areas presenting the most problems. We can boil down their advice to these guidelines. Keep the design simple. Keep the design of any graphic as simple as possible. Pare away any non-essential design elements so the data stands out. Think of it this way. As much of the ink as possible in a graphic should deal with a data point and not decoration. Some of the worst mistakes occur when design elements interfere with the clear presentation of information, such as needless 3D effects, drop shadows, patterns, and excessive grid lines. Don't let a design element turn into what Tuft calls chart junk. 
these examples show how a 3d bar graph provides initial visual appeal but is harder to read and understand than a straightforward presentation of the same information the multiple lines of the 3d bars confuse some readers because the front of the bars appears to have a lower value than the back of the bars before example is a 3d bar graph after example a bar graph not in 3d check proportions of visuals generally you should avoid graphics that start at a non-zero baseline because they distort differences by destroying correct proportions compare these two bar charts to see how the non-zero baseline can mislead the reader as to the magnitude of change from quarter to quarter draw graphics to scale any graphic should be proportionately correct or drawn to scale for example if you are showing an increase in oil production through a series of oil barrels in ever-increasing sizes make sure a barrel isn't represented as 50 percent bigger when production only went up 25 percent that year be consistent when grouping graphics if you group graphics side by side avoid changing your scale from one graphic to another as in the example above also lining up three graphics that present data in billions millions then dollars can mislead the reader don't reverse time in graphics showing information over time time should flow forward not backward in these examples even though the first graphic is clearly labeled it gives a false visual impression that earnings are going down over time rather than up organize data to hasten insights choose an organization that helps the reader grasp information and comparisons quickly for instance if you have a list of foreign stock markets showing their returns in one year list them in descending order by the magnitude of their returns instead of in alphabetical order integrate text with graphics a graphic and its text should be together you don't want to break your reader's concentration by separating the two forcing your reader on a detour to another page in search of the graphic that goes with the text think twice about pie charts according to tuft the only worse decision than a pie chart is several of them pie charts can be useful in illustrating parts of a whole but not when you divide the pie into more than five or six slices most readers find it difficult to draw accurate comparisons between pie slices or between multiple pie charts because the slices form irregular shapes showing the same information in a table can often be clearer don't forget your topography when choosing a typeface for text such as axis labels consider using a sans serif typeface if the line is small and the text is short in length if you want to insert a note or explanation directly on the graphic use a serif font if the text is long continue to use upper and lower case type for increased legibility the guidelines for good topography we discussed earlier still apply when creating graphics trust your eye finally one guideline rises above all others in importance and rests squarely with you cultivate an appreciation of graphics and then trust your eye if a graphic seems unclear or unhelpful to you no matter how many guidelines it follows it probably is graphics communicate numbers and concepts visually you turn to graphics when they stimulate a deeper or quicker understanding and appreciation of a situation than words alone to create a good graphic you must study the design critically and assess whether it conveys information honestly accurately and efficiently color black is a color the majority of your documents will be produced in black and white when designing these documents it's easy to forget that you are using a color black since black is such a powerful color balancing it on the page can be a tightrope act too little emphasis can gray out the page, too much can blacken it. If you are using only black, your use of type is usually the way you balance the page's color. Some typefaces are heavier or lighter than others, and most type families are available in varying weights. For example, heavy times extra bold, less heavy times bold, lighter times semi-bold, lighter still times regular. Heavy, universe black, less heavy universe bold lighter universe regular lighter still universe light 
choosing the proper combinations of type weights will help to make your document look more inviting some additional ways to introduce visual appeal to a one color document are through shadings graphics rules or lines colored paper stocks again your use of these elements should not overwhelm or distract from the legibility of your text end of chapter seven section five of a plain english handbook how to create clear sec disclosure documents by the office of investor education and assistance u s securities and exchange commission this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by marianne chapter eight time saving tips following are some tips that have saved time for those who routinely rewrite documents in plain english photocopy the document single sided on eleven by seventeen paper ledger paper to one hundred and twenty per cent of its original size this gives you room to make notes in the margins and helps to save your eyesight keep your original document handy you'll use it again later read through the ledger sized copy and take notes in the margin of each paragraph jot down the main and supporting points we suggest using a pencil unless you're one of those people who does crossword puzzles in ink if you can't find these points too easily it may mean the paragraph is a hodgepodge of unrelated topics this stage of the process can be space consuming in your workspace or in a conference room tape or tack the pages of your document to the wall if it's too long you may want to spread out just your outline and summary then thinking of your investors physically move the pages into the order that makes the most sense if only parts of pages need to be moved cut them out and move just the parts remember to group like information together when you start to reorder your document by moving pages or parts of pages right on the page or section where it appeared in the original document the page number and paragraph if applicable and a number or letter to indicate its place in the new draft it's a good idea to keep the notes and questions you wrote in the margins distinct from your cross-reference marks by writing them in a different color use colored pencils since it's likely you'll move sections around more than once once you have finished physically reorganizing the document you may want to outline the new organization on a separate piece of paper write the names for the new sections you created under each section name write down its major elements this is the outline of your plain english draft and with some revisions will become your table of contents keep in mind that the most effective outlines are more like sketches just detailed enough to set priorities and create logical relationships next to each entry in your outline be sure to note where this information appeared in the original document this is very important cross-referencing accurately now may save you hours of backtracking later tape your recorded sections on blank pieces of ledger size paper and photocopy them this will be the master document from which you will rewrite as you rewrite each time you complete a sentence or paragraph draw a line through it in pencil this way you'll be sure to account for all the original content in your rewrite chapter nine using readability formulas and style checkers readability formulas determine how difficult a piece of writing is to read however you should be aware of a major flaw in every readability formula no formula takes into account the content of the document being evaluated in other words no formula can tell you if you have conveyed the information clearly for the most part they count the number of syllables and words in a sentence and the number of sentences in the sample of course if you applied a readability formula to a traditional disclosure document it would fail miserably but keep in mind that by some formulas calculations einstein's theory of relativity reads at a fifth grade level some computerized style checkers analyze your grammar and identify the passive voice they may suggest ways to make your writing more readable take their suggestions as just that suggestions the final test of whether any piece of writing meets its goal of communicating information comes when humans read it chapter ten evaluating the document you can evaluate your document by testing it with a focus group experts call this audience-centered testing because it focuses on the interaction between a particular document and a representative sample of its readers while the results are reliable focus groups require time and money 
focus group testing tends to work better with shorter documents or portions of longer ones you can also test the portions of your document that you plan to use repeatedly at the very least you'll have helpful feedback on the sections that investors are most likely to read and on the language that appears most frequently in your disclosure documents based on the test results you can isolate the parts that cause the most confusion and fix them if you don't have the budget to test your document formally through focus groups improvise ask individuals in your office who most closely resemble your investors to read your draft document and listen closely to their reactions ask others who have some distance from the project to read it a pair of fresh eyes often picks up the obvious problems that those who have worked with the document miss chapter eleven reading list if you want more information on how to write in plain english we've listed just a few of the many resources available including those from the sec you may want to visit your local library to review these books or a broader selection goldstein and lieberman's book the lawyer's guide to writing well includes a comprehensive list of books about legal writing we are not endorsing any of these books but have included them as a resource for your convenience claire carewall cook line by line houghton mifflin 1985 alan j davis graphs and doublespeak quarterly review of doublespeak volume 18 number 4 july 1992 brian a garner the elements of legal style oxford university press 1991 brian a garner a dictionary of modern legal usage oxford university press second edition 1995 Tom Goldstein and Jethro K. Lieberman, The Lawyer's Guide to Writing Well, University of California Press, 1989. Karen Elizabeth Gordon, The Transitive Vampire, A Handbook of Grammar for the Innocent, the Eager, and the Doomed, Times Books, 1984. Karen Elizabeth Gordon, The New Well-Tempered Sentence, A Punctuation Handbook for the Innocent, the Eager, and the Doomed, Tickner and Fields, 1993. William Lutz, The New Doublespeak, Why No One Knows What Anyone's Saying Anymore, HarperCollins, 1996. David Melenkoff, Legal Writing, Sense and Nonsense, West Publishing Company, 1982. William Strunk, Jr. and E.B. White, Elements of Style, Macmillan, 3rd Revised Edition, 1981. Edward R. Tuft, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, Graphics Press, 1983. Robin Williams, The Mac is Not a Typewriter, Peach Pit Press, 1990. Richard C. Wydeck, Plain English for Lawyers, Carolina Academic Press, 2nd Edition, 1985. William Zinzer, On Writing Well, Harper and Row, 4th Edition, 1988. SEC Publications, before and After Plain English Examples and Sample Analyses, SEC Division of Corporate Finance, April 4, 1998. Plain English Pilot Program, Selected Plain English Samples, SEC Division of Corporate Finance, January 28, 1998. Securities Act Release Number 33-7380, Plain English Discourse, Proposing Release, January 14, 1997. 62 Federal Register 3512, January 21, 1997. Securities Act Release Number 33-7497, Plain English Disclosure, Adopting Release, January 28, 1998. 63 Federal Register 6370, February 6, 1998. Chapter 12. Keeping in Touch with Us. We hope that this handbook will prove useful to you in drafting and creating plain English documents. Although we have drawn the suggestions in the handbook from those who have written plain English documents and from experts in the field, we realize that much more will be learned along the way that can benefit all of us. We would appreciate receiving your suggestions on how we can improve this handbook. We would also like to collect as many examples of befores and their plain English afters as possible, as well as any tips that have helped you save time and energy. Please forward your suggestions and before and after examples to Nancy M. Smith, Director, Office of Investor Education and Assistance, SEC, 450 5th Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 
two zero five four nine. End of chapter twelve and end of a plain English handbook how to create clear SEC disclosure documents by the Office of Investor Education and Assistance, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission.